Our world is full of the unexplainable. And if history is an open book, all of these amazing tales are right there on display, just waiting for us to explore. Welcome to the Cabinet of Curiosities. Most people today know at least the basics of the story of France's King Louis XVI. He was the last king of France, and when he died, the monarchy died with him. And of course, he was the grandson of Louis the Great, also known as the Sun King. Even his wife, Marie Antoinette, was well known, with one of the more recognizable names from popular history. But what most people tend to skip over is his childhood. Unlike his grandfather, the Sun King, who ascended to the throne at the age of just four, Louis XVI didn't become king until he was nearly 20, which means he had a lot of time before that to experience life from his less lofty position. One moment in particular stands out. As a child, Louis was approached by an astrologer who asked if he could make a prediction. When Louis agreed, this astrologer warned the future king to be cautious of the 21st day of each month. This warning came with no further explanation, but despite that, it planted itself firmly in the boy's mind. Later, after taking the throne in 1774, Louis organized his responsibilities as king around that childhood fear. He avoided doing any important business on the 21st of each month, assuming that if he never set the wheels in motion on those days, there would be nothing to return and harm him. Then again, what was coming down the pipeline was something no one could have predicted. When the American Revolution broke out in 1776, Benjamin Franklin approached Louis for help with defeating the British rule of the American colonies. King Louis agreed and sent much support to their cause. And in the end, it worked. The British were defeated and the French gained a new powerful ally. But it also showed the French citizens that a country could exist without a monarchy. In 1789, revolution broke out again, this time in France. Inspired in part by the Americans, the French overthrew their own king and set up a republic in its place, which meant that King Louis XVI had to go. But here's where it gets weird. King Louis did his best to fight off the revolution, but on June 20th of 1791, he and his family put on the clothing of servants and escaped into the night, while their servants remained behind dressed as nobles. The following day, they were captured and arrested. That would be June 21st, for anyone keeping track. A little over a year later, the new French government issued an official pronouncement that abolished the French monarchy forever. The date? September 21st, 1792. It would take another few months before Louis met his fate. It's the part most of us know the best. Louis was led out into the Palace de la Coronade, where an enormous crowd had gathered to watch the execution. There, in front of the people he once ruled over, Louis gave a brief speech and was then executed by guillotine. The date? 1793. January 21st, of course. That old astronomer told Louis to avoid the 21sts of the month, And looking back, it seems like that was pretty solid advice. The trouble was, he couldn't control everything. No one, not even a king, can stop the march of time. Tony had arrived in London to take part in the production of a new Hollywood film. It was an adaptation of a popular novel, and because of that, Tony really wanted to get a copy of the book for himself, to read and study and use as a resource for his own performance. Shortly after arriving in the city, he headed out to a local bookstore to see if they had a copy, but left empty-handed. He checked a few more stores, but each visit resulted in the same outcome. Frustrated, Tony decided to call it quits and head back to his apartment, so he walked to the nearest subway station, Leicester Square, and headed inside. While he waited for the train to arrive, he took a seat on one of the nearby benches. No one was sitting there, 
But as he sat down, he noticed that someone had left a small pile of papers at one end. His curiosity drove him to pick up the pile and look through it, which is when he made a fantastic discovery. There, inside the papers, was a copy of the very same book that he'd been trying and failing all day to buy. Tony took that book home and devoured it. It was clearly a well-loved copy, with handwriting scrawled in pencil throughout the pages, but it allowed him to fully understand the author's vision for his character, and that gave him the tools he needed to deliver his best as an actor. After the filming was complete, he left London and took the book with him. Roughly two years later, Tony was in Vienna working on the film's production when he had a chance to meet the author of that elusive book. The writer, George Pfeiffer, thanked Tony for his performance and help in bringing his novel to life, but also lamented that he no longer owned a single copy of his own novel. Tony listened in surprise as George described loaning his last copy to a good friend. But that friend, George added, never returned my copy. In fact, she told me she lost it in the subway. Tony smiled and then reached into his bag and pulled out the copy of the book he still carried with him. The cover was still sharp and the title of the book was printed across it. The Girl from Petrovka. George Pfeiffer took the copy in his hands with wide eyes and then opened it up to look at the pages. There, scribbled in the margins, were his own personal notes. This is it he exclaimed, smiling wide at Tony. Tony, understanding his place in this wild coincidence, gladly passed ownership of the book back to George. So that's how an author rediscovered his own missing novel. Lost by random circumstances, it had returned to him through the most unusual of events and handed over to him by one of Hollywood's most legendary leading men. Our hero, the actor, you see wasn't listed in the credits as Tony, but by the name all of us know him by today, Anthony Hopkins. I hope you've enjoyed today's guided tour of the Cabinet of Curiosities. Subscribe for free on Apple Podcasts or learn more about the show by visiting curiositiespodcast.com. This show was created by me, Aaron Mankey, in partnership with How Stuff Works, I make another award-winning show called Lore, which is a podcast, book series, and television show. And you can learn all about it over at theworldoflore.com. And until next time, stay curious. Stay curious.